Welcome back everybody to the Nated Electronic Technician. I'm with you forever, Bongo Maikale, and today I just wanted to talk about why did I change my careers into becoming a electronic tech or electrician or whatever. My things can change sometimes. So originally I did make a video about how I studied electrical engineering and uh, graduated and everything like that. Um, I was doing music and stuff, but when COVID hit, I needed to have like something that can be a little bit more uh, um, more stable. Since when COVID happened, we didn't have any shows. Sound engineering wasn't really a thing for me, so I was doing any events. I wasn't renting out speakers. I wasn't setting up sound or anything like that. And in my mind, I thought that okay, cool, that happened. Uh, this is gonna things are gonna come better and whatever, whatever, but it never did, it never did. So I realized to myself, actually my mother <laughs> pointed that out to me because I'm stubborn as hell, but she pointed out to me that, yo, dude, you study electrical engineering. Why don't you do something with your, your qualifications? Go out and work, uh, get your apprenticeship or whatever like that and do something with it. Don't let it sit down or whatever like that. And uh, cool, originally I wanted to go to mining and work uh, for mines because mines had big money, but the mines at that time as well were shutting down. So there were no learnerships they were giving out. There were no apprenticeships coming out. Any ones that were coming from over there, you had to pay money to get in. Like I'm talking about ridiculous amount. You had to pay like 40,000, 50,000 Rand to get into a learnership program when it's supposed to be like uh, best qualifications come in a bit. So there was, there was too much of my friend, whatever to put in over there. So when I went to where I worked at TV Mecca, no, where I'm working at TV Mecca, I got uh, 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 hired under the pretense of being a, a learner because there were absolutely nobody else doing electronics. In my town, everyone is doing uh, electrician work. So you'd be finding them working on big uh, machines and be doing uh, factory stuff and all that kind of things. I did work at a factory. I worked at Armature World for about a year and I really did not like um, the work I was doing over there because I, like I said, wanted to do a lot of uh, electrical work and be honed in that profession because that's what I studied but I ended up doing a lot of mechanical work now uh, <laughs> to tell you I also did a lot of mechanical subjects um, in college as well so I had um, one of my majors which is industrial electronics um, ETT then I added things like power machines I added um, control systems I also added um, what else did I add over there Phil? and Meccano, which did a lot open me to have like this weird qualification and I think I was the only person who decided to do this was to have an electro-mechanical kind of qualification where I can kind of work in both sectors but I did not like the mechanical side but it did open doors for me to uh, continue working with that so doing winding work or motor work or stuff like that was pretty easy for me to do but again didn't like it because I was welding a lot and oh coming home with all those burnt marks on my back, arc eye and stuff like that, I didn't enjoy it. So, I always had a love for electronics, uh, especially, well, I didn't even know how to do electronics, but I really had a love for electronics. So, I was like, okay, let's go over there and let's work and uh, do that and got in. So, why I'm saying that is that, okay, cool, I joined that and I did that. But let, let me tell you actually, we'll say why I like working with electronics. Uh, or electrical in general, but mostly want to focus on electronics. Is that because with electronics, you kind of work on your own pace? Not really, but you work on your own pace. You are the one who has to do fault finding. You are the one who has to build the thing and all that kind of stuff and plan it and stuff like that. If you have bigger teams and bigger companies, you would find that you are the one that uh, if you're doing the if you're the tech guy or whatever, you have to come up with solutions for a lot of problems. That but that's in any engineering like that. Um, Electronics as well for me is kind of like a different language that not a very few people, especially in my circles, uh, know where I can talk about diodes and Zener diodes or whatever like that and very few people would actually understand what it is. They just want to know if the thing works or doesn't work. But for me, uh, I love knowing how inside how everything works and how the voltages are being converted and how all that kind of jazz and stuff like that's going over there. And what I also love about electronics and electrical engineering in general is that it always changes. There's always something new. There's always something else that's just got designed. And that's how uh, um, life 
is with with that somebody's always designing something new we always have to learn something so it's never a very stagnant job so it's not a day where i'm sitting not doing nothing absolutely nothing that's impossible it's always something i have to learn it's either something i have to uh get acquainted for uh, another course i have to do and etc etc which I, I love that kind of thing i love learning and i love moving on um uh, love learning and love uh, uh pushing myself to 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 know more things so that's also another thing that I really love about electronics. Number three, why I love doing also electronics is that because it's not as dangerous as electrician work. So we're not always working, well we are, but we're not always working with 220. So the risks of um, electro uh, electrical shock and all that kind of stuff are still there, but they're not as bad as working with a um, couple of thousands kva we're just working with straight up to 20 and we're doing our normal 12 volts 5 volts 3 volts that's all you're going to be most of the time working on so it's safer on the equipment it's safer on you you don't have to wear so much uh ppe so you hardly hardly see us wearing helmets boots or all that kind of stuff and we're not chugging heavy things they are heavy they can get heavy but it's all smaller things like that uh Things I don't like about electronics is that people also think it's too easy to do. It's easy to a point, but it's never, it's not an easy thing to do. It's really not a easy electrical work. It's not something that you just wake up and you're going to just say you do. You need to study. You need to always be on <laughs> the pros of that. It's also the con of this as well, that you have to always be on top of whatever the latest thing is. So you can be able to fix it, repair it or build it or be able to control it or service it or anything like that. So it's going to be a lot of study work. You're not going to have time to go out and party. You're going to have very few friends. Uh, and it's, unless they're also doing engineering too, it's going to be, really, really, it's going to be very difficult for, uh, to adjust and for people to cope around with that. Another thing I don't like about electronics is also the scarcity of components. Getting components is not as easy as people think it is. Yes, if you have something that's analog and you're using your standard uh, op amps using your standard resistors and capacitors and all that kind of stuff easy easy to fix easy to get but now when we're talking about specific ICs where some companies do not even mention it or give it out to people to let them know what IC is working over here and where can you buy them it's not gonna happen you're not gonna get it uh, there were a lot of jobs that uh, I couldn't do because I couldn't simply could not get the ICs I had to get it off other boards or the boards that I already got there were already the uh, what you call uh, scrapped or stuff like that. So making things like that, uh, repairing things like that or um, stuff really was a, was a con for me. I hate that and it's always, it's so frustrating every day. And I, there's always going to be something that's going to come in my shop that I'm not going to be always able to fix, uh, which sucks. Even though you know how to fix it, but you either can't get the board or you can't get the thing. And then unfortunately, that's, that's, that's it for the, for the customers. And then number three for me, the art of a con is just the, the, the type of clientele that you have. Especially if you're doing PCB repairs. Uh, we sometimes do industrial repairs for these larger companies where they'll send us out and we would have to do like um, a repair for a control circuit or we have to look at whatever like that. Can happen. But on the commercial side, it's not cool because how you price the customers and how they're willing to pay and etc makes things uh difficult because they think all right i already bought the thing i have to pay more money uh to fix the thing or repair it or whatever like that so you always going to have back and forth with customers but that's any business with anything like that you're constantly going to have back and forth they're gonna not want to pay for certain things or they it's just you either have to figure out how to make it cheaper which is impossible or the price it is and you stand your ground so those are just a few things of uh i like and just not like about being in the as a electro electronic technician or electrician or working with electricity in general there are cool things about it very cool very exciting things and it's also very uh not so exciting or not so good things about it as well uh, for a person who is getting thinking about becoming an electrician or a technician you kind of have to do like personality tests about yourself to see what would you be willing to or what are you comfortable doing and what do, would you enjoy doing or how would you enjoy studying some of these things uh i've seen for a lot of people who are a little bit uh hot-headed and tempered and have a that kind of temperament would not necessarily uh be able to work in an environment like this especially if you are going to be uh, isolated and uh, secluded most of the time like how or we are at the back of the workshop we seldomly come together but 
uh, we are problem solving on your own. So if you are can't work by yourself or you constantly need supervision to get things done, that's going to be a problem for you to get in as well or to be doing. So be independent. Only advice I can give. And um, also, if you don't like studying and you don't like, I mean, like this is what something crazy thing that somebody said to me about becoming an electrician or a technician is just as grueling as becoming as a doctor or working as a doctor. The, well, in any other profession, like well, engineering per se, it's the same amount of years studying. It's the same amount of um, it's the same amount of years studying, and the course coursework is just as grueling and daunting. Even though you don't really use all of the stuff, but just making sure that you actually study the things and know what you are um, getting yourself into. But it's still the same. Uh, cool things when you do have doctor clients and you have those, they understand. So I love you guys if you are. If you're one of them doctors or whatever like that to come to my shop i appreciate you i love you so much yeah so i just made this quick video just uh just to just let people know uh technician work what is it or if you like would you like it or what the pros and cons it's uh it's one of these weird videos that i'm just gonna be doing every now and again i am making a video now two videos that well i actually making a video right now about like uh db boards and distribution boards how to fault find them repair them install them and etc um I'm getting, I'm actually going to make like a panel or something like that where I can put the things on and we can take it step by step. But I did have one where I had a job all today that I had to um, get a DB board, find the fault of the thing and put it together to find out it's both like a high voltage and a low voltage problem that came over there. So it was perfect for me to come and work in and get it done. I uh, also have another video where I'm going to be talking about my multimeters again like I've been promising that and I see in the comment section you guys are actually hitting me up about getting that done and showing the phases of the practicals and stuff like that so cool we're gonna I'm gonna show you start with just let's learn the multimeters before we do a full uh, component uh, breakdown and tear down where I show you like different things from resistors capacitors and all that kind of stuff put it in a condensed but in a very educational um the video format and video styles but if you guys do enjoy videos like this please do hit that like and subscribe button make sure you let your pro audio tech or pro electronic tech guy know what's uh what's going on where you're from uh what would you guys like to learn and all that kind of stuff and i will check you next time